Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, paper crafter and artist here on YouTube, and I bring you a pencil light bulb video. It's a real time video. I don't usually do that with my pencil work because my technique is so slow, but I've got this tiny image from Lawn Fawn, and I thought it would be perfect to show you some details of my pencil technique. Stamped it onto some uh, cream Nina cardstock using some Hero Arts sand ink. However, it looks like my stamp was dirty because I had stamped it in black earlier and this ink definitely came out darker than the sand color would have. But I decided to leave it because I thought it would still work for what I wanted to do and why waste a piece of paper if I could actually make it work? So why not? I am going in with my Prismacolor pencils and these Prismacolors are my favorite brand of regular old dry wax pencil. I've been using these since college and that's just my favorite thing to use. I'm going in with an orangey color to create sort of a halo around my light bulb. And I've chosen this orangey color even though I was originally thinking I wanted to make that gray line disappear, but I realized that gray was going to be kind of a dead color for the card that I was going to make. So I didn't want to use just a gray. I wanted to have some other color base underneath of it. So I'm going around it with this 1033 color and just making a really light halo around it. And you can see, since we're zoomed in so, so, so close, you can see the texture of the Nina cardstock that's brought out by the pencil. And when I use my really, really sharp pencil, I can get into some of those little areas of texture and smooth them out by just filling in that little spot. And you know, when you go back and forth like this, you create little lines. And sometimes you can get rid of those little lines if you're really careful by filling in some of the spots in between. And you can go different directions and, and stuff until you get them really smooth. I happen to like the look of colored pencil. So I'm not going to go in and make it uber, uber perfect and smooth. Some people would really, this would, is probably driving you nuts that you love the look of Gamsol and really stretching out that color and making it really smooth and making it kind of look like Copic markers or something. I love the look of pencil. This is going to look like an illustrated hand-drawn light bulb when I'm done and I think that has a real appeal on cards that we don't seem to get when we have all these other mediums that look all perfect and the blending is exact. I, I like the idea that there are some little pencil imperfections left in this. So I'm not going to do that entirely, but I'm going to get it pretty good and pretty smooth in, in the kind of overall effect. And it's a little bit darker as you get right around the light bulb itself, but I wanted to add more color to it as well because I, my original intent was to make it look like there was no stamping on this. So I wanted to go right up to the light bulb, right up to that line with a grayish pencil so that the line will not look like it's really there. The other thing that this does is allow that light bulb to start looking whiter. If you look at it, you know, kind of step back with your eyeballs, the, the bulb is looking lighter and lighter and lighter the more of these dark colors are around it. That's just a principle of art and, and visuals. Any, anything that you're looking at, you see things because of the contrast between one object and another. If you have a whole bunch of objects in one space that are all the same tone, all the same value, and the lighting is the exact same color and there's no contrast, you're not gonna really see anything. But for something like this, the thing that makes that white light bulb look white, even though it's on cream paper, is the fact that it's got darker color around it. So I'm just gonna work around with layers and add more of this gray. The other thing that that you'll notice is that it doesn't look entirely like gray either because I put that orange undercoat. The undercoat is just going to give that gray a different flavor so it's going to be a little warmer overall. It's going to be a valentine so I want it to be a little happier. If it was all gray it would not be so much of a valentine kind of card. And I wanted to make it look a little bit masculine though so I didn't want it to be totally orangey so it, it's kind of striding that middle line of being partially masculine, part, partially feminine. And I'm struggling a little bit here with some of the directions that I put my pencil on. So I'm turning my hand and going different ways. If I were doing this not on camera, I would probably just be turning my paper around. So if you're trying this at home, 
then feel free to turn your paper because that's going to make it easier for your hand to move around different directions. But the sharper your pencil is, the more those little tiny areas that you can get in between and really fill those little spots in. And one of the things I also like to do is squint at my work to see whether or not I'm getting enough contrast. If you can start to see with squinted eyes that there's, there's a definite contrast and a definite edge to this developing, then you know you're, you're on the right track. Now, I also noticed I had a couple areas in here where I had some heavier pencil lines that didn't, didn't go as well as I would have liked. Now, I could spend hours adjusting this. Hours, literally. Okay, and I, and I have done that on some fine art pieces. But this is a card. I'm going to be doing a bunch of Valentines for my church to be able to use for a fundraiser. So I wanted to be able to um, do it fairly quickly. I didn't want to take forever to do this. Sorry, my hand got in the way. We're zoomed in so far that uh, anything I do kind of covers it up. But I'm taking a kneaded eraser and just tapping on some of those areas where I had a little too much pencil. With a kneaded eraser, you can actually form it into the shape of a pencil point and go into particular areas and, you know, like remove one little dot of pencil. Or you can take a knife and just chip off one little piece of wax. So if you have something that's in one spot too heavy, you can adjust some of that. But remember, if it's a card, that it's a card. And don't, don't spend days working on one illustrated light bulb for a card. I just wanted it to be, to, to have that look of, and feel of a handmade drawing. So I've added some shadows and stuff to the base of it, and then I wanted to stamp the little center of it, which is in the shape of a little heart, and I stamped it in bubblegum. Now this is a little brighter than I probably should have done if it was like technically going to be a guy card, but um, I think it's the design is going to be simple enough. It's still going to work for that. And I'm, I found a pencil that I thought was close enough to it, 994, so that I can make this, this little glow around the heart. And again, I'm using the same technique with a super sharp pencil to just go right up to the edge. And I was debating whether or not I wanted the darkest part of it to be on the inside or the outside. And then I thought, well, what if part of it was on the inside, part of it was on the outside? So that it just sort of has that, that little center that's just kind of glowing in some way or another. Uh, I don't know that scientifically it matters on a card if you're doing it hyper accurately, but I'm just trying to create some interesting shapes and some interesting fades because I'm also going to add some glassiness to the outside glass, but I wanted to get this pink part in there first so I know where all of that glassiness is going to start and stop. So I'm just going to blend my edges out so they soften out a little tiny bit more, and then I'm going to go in with more of a light uh, warm gray type of color. And I'm going to add a little bit of shadows onto the circle. I'm going to leave white on the outside, or shall we say cream, because this is cream paper, and leave some uncolored part right at the edge so that that looks like reflected, bounced light. And then I'll go around the other side and do the same. There's a million ways you can do this, a million different ways you can add highlights and things onto glass balls like this. You can look up stuff like that online and Find something to copy. Find something with interesting reflections that you want to copy. I decided I was going to put something that looked like maybe a window in a reflection. So I'm going to lightly, very, very lightly, draw a grid to make a window. And then color right up to the outside of it. And not color the top. I'm not finishing it off so that it looks like that highlight runs into another highlight. And it's going to make it look much more glassy to just leave it that way blending out some of those areas in, in, inside the in-between parts to soften them up. And I was debating whether or not I wanted to just go in more heavily with this pencil or just switch to another color. And that's when I switched to this darker color. This is the same color I used around the outside, that grayish color. And I'm going to add a few spots that are darker than the others just to add some more difference to it. And with all these, you know, if you look online, like I said, at, at glass things with highlights and shadows, you'll see there's a whole series of reflections. There's some that are lighter, some that are darker. I'm going to give some a hard edge, like right at the bottom of that shape. And just finish that off so I have a nice crisp edge. 
And then I'll have another, not as crisp edge, but another dark area down there at the bottom. Just to give it a little more reflection. And then I'll do a little bit more on the other side. I was just trying to figure out exactly where all this might go. And you don't want to overdo it. You want to do enough that there's just a nice suggestion of all of these different kinds of shapes and reflections all over it. And that is the end of that. So I've put it on a really basic, simple card. I've layered a piece of the Nina cardstock on top that has just a simple circle punched out of it. And the sentiment I put onto a, a little piece that I've popped the center more than the rest of it. So it lifts up and just gives a little more interest to the card. The other two parts are glued down with some adhesive and that center part just lifts up right underneath of that bulb. And I think the design really focuses well on that, the work that was done in the center. So here's three more pencil videos if you want to see more of my pencil work. And you can also subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. You can hit more on the blog to go over to my blog. There's also links in the description to go check out more over there. You can find me on social all over the place as Sandy Alma. And I will see you guys next time. Have a really super day and go do something creative. Bye-bye now.